I'm sure we're all familiar with the stereotype that England is just cold and rainy all the time, right? Well, like all stereotypes, there's probably an element of truth to that, but you can't paint an entire country with one broad brush. Some parts of England are warm and dry enough to make wine. In the last 20 to 30 years, thanks in part to climate change, England has been making some world-class wines, in particular sparkling wines that are even beating French champagne in blind competitions. So where did this tradition begin and how did we get to where we are today? Well, there's ample documentation that at one time, England actually grew its own grapes and made its own wine, back in the Roman times. Thanks to a warming cycle in the climate which made it conducive for growing grapes, there were something like 1,500 different wineries in ancient England. Unfortunately, in the 14th century, the Black Death wiped out about one third of England's population. That combined with changes in ocean currents made England cold and wet again, which all but killed the wine industry. Fortunately, by this time, England and France had struck up a bustling trade partnership. And this is about the time when you see sparkling wine arrive on British shores. By the 17th century, sparkling wine and champagne was such a rage in England that a British man named Christopher Merritt actually tried to patent a recipe to make it. Royalty, the upper crust, aristocrats, they all consider this to be the official drink of the British elite. Now the climate fluctuates so much in England that after the Middle Ages, it became cold and wet for several hundred years, making it almost impossible to grow grapes and make wine. And it wasn't until the 1940s that a gentleman by the name of Ray Barrington Brock started his own self-funded viticultural research station in Oxted, where he tested over 600 different varieties to see what could be grown in England. Thanks to that research, the first modern winery was started in England in 1952, and at the time it was just one acre in size. But because of that winery, it sparked a revolution, and the rest is history. But the country really got its jump start just about 20 years ago when climatologists reported that summers in England were getting noticeably warmer. Winemakers recognized that the champagne grapes, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Pinot Meunier did particularly well here. And although there are wineries in every county in England, the lion's share of them are down south where the coastal regions can moderate the temperature and keep the vineyards warm. In fact, the climate and the environment down there are very similar to that of Chablis and Champagne. These days, England has about 8,000 acres of vineyards, 150 different wineries, and they produce about 3 million bottles a year. Sparkling wine represents about 70% of their production, so that's what gets the most attention. The regions of Kent and Cornwall in the south are particularly prestigious and making world-class wines. Now, Kent is by far the largest with about 26% of all England's wineries, and this particular winery right here has been in Kent since 2004. This one here is a blend of Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and just a touch of Pinot Meunier. Ridgeview, Camel Valley, Chapel Down, and Nye Timber are some of the more famous producers. Most British bubbles are made in the same tradition and to the same high quality standards as French Champagne. The grapes are hand harvested, the wines are all bottle fermented, and they see extended yeast aging for all that complexity of flavor. So is there an English sparkling wine flavor profile? Well, I've had a few of them and I'd say some of them were bang on for French Champagne, but in general, they tend to lean a little bit more into the acidity. While French Champagne can be toasty, smooth, and silky, English sparklers are a lot more light and brisk, a lot like the Brits themselves. Now, by some estimates and climate models, Champagne and other European winemaking regions are slated to rise in temperature over the next 50 years to the point where they may not be able to make wine anymore. In which case, uh, it's interesting to ponder that we may be buying most of our sparkling wine from England one day. Now, because supply is limited and England is relatively small, the one thing you'll discover is that their pricing is slightly less than regular champagne. Um, but I expect as production ramps up over the years and as exporting becomes more common, you'll see the price of English bubbly go down. So what do you think about English bubbly? Would you try it? Have you tried it before? And if so, what do you think? I'd love to hear your comments shared below this video. Oh yeah, and uh, if you'd love to drink beautiful wines like these and get them delivered to your door every month, plus do a live tasting with me, then consider joining the WTSO Premium Wine Club. I'll leave the link down below for you to check out and hopefully join us. And if you like these videos and the information that we're providing through them, don't forget to subscribe to the WTSO YouTube channel. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you for the next glass of wine. Cheers, everybody.